Hi, and welcome everybody to the Winter Circle Sports Betting Channel. My name is Ross Benjamin. Today I'm joined by Mr. Sean Higgs and Mr. Paul Bobby. It's our afternoon session. We're talking the NFL today. A um, couple good games we're talking about, and uh, these gentlemen will be discussing on Buffalo at Kansas City, and Paul will be looking at the Eagles and Cowboys. Uh, Sean will be looking at Buffalo, Kansas City, by the way. And uh, I get the unenviable task of discussing the Packers and the Giants. Whoa. Anyway. Uh, you picked a game. Boys, so that's what you gave yourself. Yeah, well, it, <laughs> we had to cover it. It's a Monday night game. and uh, you, you, know, upset, you upset Paul so much you had to leave the room and talk about the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Paul's a, well, you know what, Sean? Paul's a, actually still a Giants season ticket holder, even though he resides in Mexico. Him and his brother have season tickets to the Giants, so that's what might have been why he left the room because you know, he <laughs> just was embarrassed or whatever. But and anyway, they won two in a row. Watch out for the Giants. All right, um, we haven't discussed this topic with you two gentlemen, and I did with Doug yesterday. But I'm interested to hear your take. Uh, the college football playoff committee made their final decisions. Uh, much to the chagrin of a couple teams out there, namely Georgia and Florida State. Uh, but, uh, Sean, what's your take? I mean, did they get it right, or uh, do you have uh, an issue or two? It's, I mean, what? I don't know why Georgia lost. I guess the argument is we were the number one team for basically the whole year, and we should be in. Yeah. This is this is like is it? It's like baseball. Is it the Hall of Fame or Hall of Statistics? Like you want the best team? Well, I'm sorry, Florida State. You're not the best team right now. Your quarterback's no. not there. But if it's over the course of the season, well, they were undefeated. You beat two SEC teams, conference champion. Uh, goodbye, Alabama. Why is Alabama there? You you know, you two one-loss teams, you played head-to-head, -head and you lost on your home field. Now, my, my big thing about it, and I think Florida State should get in based on their season. If they're going to say, well, it's a quarterback, well, all right. So if you're telling me that if – McCarthy or somebody gets suspended, right? Some guys get suspended off a team because they throw up the shenanigans over Christmas break. Are, is that team being replaced? Does that team get replaced? And then you no. say they're not a good team. They're not good, but yet you have them ranked ahead of Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's Come the on, confusing I don't part. Understand. I don't, well, know. Yeah, let, I don't let, understand. Let me whole... ask let me ask both this, okay? Um, first of all, the committee came out last week. And whether it was a coincidence that they made this statement, it's not about the four most deserving teams that we want. It's the, best the four teams. best teams. Okay. So let me let me make it simple here. And because you know, Sean, when we talked last week, I was not a Florida State guy in terms of should they be there or not. I just think it sets up for a massacre in one of the semifinals. Yes. That's just me. Okay. But if you take, let's even look at the top eight teams, the the seven others that um, doesn't include Florida State, Michigan, number one, Washington, number two, Texas, number three, Alabama, number four, uh, Georgia, number six, Ohio State, number seven, Oregon, number eight. Paul, if Florida State was to play any of those other seven teams that I just alluded to that are in the top eight, would they be an underdog against each one of them? My answer is yes, but what's your answer? Probably. And I'm going to go back to your first question. My only sure. issue is this. You cannot take Alabama and not Texas. So those two teams, in my opinion, were joined at the hip because yep. Texas defeated Alabama. So it was a pretty simple decision. If you're going to take them both, you're going to exclude uh, Florida State, unfortunately. And you knew there was going to be controversy any which way it happened or came about. But I'm, I'm a gambler. So I let the chips fall where they may, and I play the hand in front of me. And that's the way I look at it. I don't get caught up in all this rigmarole. A decision had to be made. They handed it down. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, I think the worst thing that happened for Georgia is – Alabama not only losing to Texas, but losing to Texas at home. And I don't want to say in a decisive manner, but there was no fluke involved in that result. Texas fully deserved and outplayed Alabama in that game. And uh, it's too bad because, I mean, Alabama beats Texas. Obviously, we're not talking about Texas. 
we're talking about Alabama and Georgia both being there, in my estimation. Then again, you look at the playoff committee, uh, how you drop from number one to number six is ridiculous, um, in my opinion, Sean. Uh, it's You're talking about a program that's the two-time defending champion and won 30 games in a row going into that SEC title game, and they drop from one to six. That I mean, if anybody has a gripe, uh, in my yeah, estimation, it's Georgia, not Florida State. It, 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 like you said, back-to-back champ, like you don't give them a chance to three-peat? Like, really, would, you, yeah. would it be sh- – you know, I wouldn't be shocked if they were in there again and face Alabama or beat Alabama in the next game. I mean, they had some bonehead plays that maybe could have won that game. But uh, what do you do? You had two other undefeated teams. Where are you, Who are you knocking out? You're taking Washington out? I, and I was down – I've had Oregon. You know, I went from seven to nine. Like, what is that about? I'm, you know, that was just a wacky – so where was the, the love on Washington, right? I mean, they were nine-point underdog in their championship game. Yeah. Why don't you boot those guys out? If it's about how good they played, they played like crap for the last two months. They beat Oregon at home, and then they've been in do or die games ever since, basically. Like yeah. or, or, they won a whole home straight. game. I, I yeah, think but look at the scores. Look at the scores, though. I mean, it's, all right, yeah, the Stanford by game went by double digits, but yeah, yeah. Arizona State fifteen to seven. You're in one score field goal games, closing out the season. Oregon State. Why? So th- that team's playing the best ball right now. No. Uh, uh, they, won their last eight twice? Game. they won their last eight games by 10 points or fewer. That's why I think the last time Oregon played an SEC team, I think Georgia crushed them like two years ago. Was that two years ago? Georgia beat them like 50 to three or something on opening yeah, the game. Yeah. I mean, and, it, and nah. going back to my point before, and yes, I am a gambler too, Paul. And I, I work in the sports betting industry and I do that for a living. My point I was trying to make is if you're taking the four best teams, And you look at the top eight, including Florida State. Uh, So let's look at the other seven. Uh, Michigan would be a favorite over Florida State right now. Washington would be favored over Florida State. Texas, um, uh, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, and Oregon, even with two losses, if they played tomorrow in the current situation of Florida State, all seven of those teams would be favored. So how you could have... How you could state you want the four best teams and not the most four deserving teams, I think they held the form. The only controversy here uh, with me is uh, Georgia really uh, got a raw deal, but I don't know what other way you could have done this. So I think well, they did a great job. So Well, I just want to make a point about Georgia. Sure. Timing yeah. is everything. They yeah. lost yesterday. If they had lost in week two – they would kind of wash this away, but you can't. They just lost. Recency counts here, and that's what happened. And I support the Georgia exclusion 100%. Yeah. I mean, I again, I, I think if anybody has a gripe, it's them, but that you could feel for. How, how I don't feel for Florida State right now. I'm sorry. I know the kids went 13 and 0 and did, did a great job and won the games. They, but the bottom line is they're not one of the top four teams. I can't say that about Georgia, but I don't know, know what other way the, the, the committee could have done this. I mean, again, the whole enigma and the whole thing was Alabama losing under losing at home to Texas. How could you exclude Texas at that point? So it is what it is. We move on. Let's talk about our games in the NFL. Sean, I'm going to start with you. The Buffalo Bills at 6-6. Six and six, are a two and a half point underdog at Kansas City, who is eight and four. Um, the total in this game is 47 and a half. These teams have played several times over the last few years. Kansas City with the upper hand when it comes to the postseason. Buffalo has held their own, if not uh, even done better uh, during the regular season against Kansas City. This to me seemed like a fishy line right out off the get go. It was at three and now it's two and a half. Your take? Yeah, and, you know, it, these aren't the same kind of teams we saw in the past, right? It's not going to be some kind of 45-40 crazy offensive. Kansas City's been playing defense, and the Buffalo offense, I mean, they're a 6-6 six and six team. This is who they are. They win a game, and since that week two, I think they beat the Washington and Raiders, and since then it's been like win-loss, win-loss. They, they can't get out of their own way. I'm taking Buffalo here, and I'm going to go money line. And it's tough going against Mahomes and and – 
Andy Reid here at home, especially off a loss. We saw him lose on a Sunday night, and everybody's going to remember that game. Like, oh, there's no way they could lose two in a row. Well, uh, maybe maybe they win. I, I, for me, this is the, the Bill season. I'm not going to go crazy overthinking, uh, dive, deep dive. They are 6-6. Six and six. This is it. You're coming out of your bye week. If you don't get an A game, A plus, A double plus, and you've beaten these guys twice, two of the last three times you've beaten this team. So time to put on your big boy pants. Let's go. Strap them up. Yeah. Get the win you're supposed to have. And that's that simple. I'm not going to – it's, yeah, it's Mahomes – Andy Reid at home, great numbers. That's all right. I'm going with the desperate team, talented as well. And for whatever reason, they have not clicked. I'm, I'm just taking Buffalo in this spot. I just the sp- and again, it's come down a half. You think it's you think it go up a half because the the Chiefs are off a loss. No, yeah. I'm, I'm on yeah. the Bills. And they're very good off a loss under Andy Reid, by the way. Yeah. This year alone. Uh, off a loss, they're three and zero straight up in ATS. They win at Jacksonville seventeen. Well, you go thirteen and three every year. You probably bounce back, right? I mean, every year, yeah. twelve, thirteen, fourteen win team. So, I mean, are few they beat between. Miami off a loss at Denver. I, it's it's again uh, the Bills' it, w- worst enemy this year has been themselves. I mean, yep. they have not got blown out of games. Their six losses have come by a combined twenty six points. But uh, they find ways to lose this year, and, and that's the difference. And, Paul, uh, I know you've been very outspoken about Josh Allen and also the Bills in particular and their plight to get to mediocrity here, uh, but what's your take on this matchup? Last year they played a game 24-20. to 20. The stats were pretty much even, but I felt Buffalo definitely had the better of it. Kansas City could not stop Stefan Diggs. Juju... Smith Schuster was Kansas City's leading receiver, along with Kelsey, five catches for 113 yards. And Nick Bolton was the leading tackler for the Chiefs, who's on the IR at 13. Buffalo, as you mentioned, has lost a lot of close shaves this year. In fact, three of the last four, or the last three losses, I should say, uh, one score or less. That was real heartbreak against um in that loss to the eagles they outplayed uh, philadelphia they should have won the game they did not i don't think kansas city is going to be able to stop buffalo here kansas city is a scaled down version of what they were they're not getting it done offensively they really don't have great receivers and i will tell you that they only had 340 yards of offense against the packers the other night The Packers in the preceding three games against mediocre competition had given up over 400. Their offense is just not clicking on all cylinders. I'm going with the Bills. If I could buy it up to three on a cheap number at 20 or less, I would do it. But I do think and agree with Sean that they're going to win the game outright. All right. So there you have it. Uh, Our official pick in the game is Buffalo on the money line, plus 120. Uh, Paul, uh, he agrees with the Buffalo side, albeit I think that Paul would not get greedy and take the two and a half like Mr. Higgs, who's, uh, you know, he's got grapefruits. Let's put it that way. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> in, in, in any event, um, there you have it, folks. And I'm not going to express my opinion on this game because I just get ridiculed by Mr. Higgs. Because because of my you allegiance, you can't you can't say anything because if you yeah. if you if you say you like the Bills and it loses, you're yeah. a jinx. So you got you got and you if you root event against them, then you're in a win win situation. So say you like yeah, them, and say so, you mean Paul are winners. It's just that simple. Yeah, thank you. I hope you guys win. <laughs> How's that? Um, and yeah, Paul. I mean, not only their last three losses, all six of their losses this year have come by six points or fewer, um, and two of them in overtime. Uh, so. 505 yards against Philly and you lose the game. That right there in a, it encapsulates everything uh, in Buffalo's 6-6 six and six start this season. All right, let's get to Paul's game, and it's a good one. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys will be out to atone for a loss at Philadelphia this year. Dallas, uh, either three or three and a half, depending on where you look. And the total in this game is 53. And, you know, uh, Paul, I mean, it's hard to fade the Cowboys the way they just dominated the, the opposition at home this year. I agree with you. And these teams played back on November 5th. 
Dallas outgained them 447 to 316. Dak Prescott 29 to 44 for 350 or so. And the Eagles are down a few notches since then. I will tell you that Jake Ferguson had seven grabs for 91 yards in that game. C.D. Lamb went off. And, and I'll tell you, they're not going to have anybody to cover Jake Ferguson this game because N'Kobe Dean was shadowing him for much of the game, as was Zach Cunningham uh, also on uh, a few plays. And, and, and Dean is out. Uh, Zach Cunningham, who had 10 tackles in that game, leading tackler for the Eagles, is out. And I want to make a point about that earlier matchup as well. The second to the sixth leading tacklers for Philadelphia were cornerbacks and safeties. Uh, Cunningham being the leading tackler, second to sixth, cornerback and safeties. That's not good. That means runners are getting into the secondary. And Dallas Goddard, by the way, had three grabs for 50 yards. He went out in... Uh, in the third quarter, 254 to go, has not been seen since. They better get him back for this game because they've been basically playing without a tight end. I don't think Philly is going to be able to contain Dallas. Uh, Dallas is going to score. They'll probably get to the high 30s here, and I don't see Philadelphia being able to match points with them. Uh, I just think Dallas is going to blow the game out, uh, open, probably around the third quarter, and they'll win by 10 to 14 points at the minimum. All right. Uh, you made a bet already in this game, and you got uh, – and I'm going by our conversation off here. Uh, you took Dallas minus three at money line odds of minus 115. So there you have it, folks. If you can get right on that key number and not have to lay the hook. But, Paul, you know, again, our conversation off air, and I can't speak for him. He can correct me if I'm wrong. But he indicated to me he didn't think the game would be close and the hook was not going to matter anyway. And I can't disagree with him. Look at uh, Sean, you're talking about a Dallas team, 6-0 and at home this year, okay, averaging 41 points per game, outscoring the opposition at home by 25.2 points per contest. And they're facing a Philly team, as uh, Paul touched upon, uh, not very good of late. I mean, even though the wins and losses don't show it, here's my concern. You look at their last five games defensively, they've given up 400-plus yards in four of their last five games. And uh, the only exception in that run was uh, their 21-17 win at Kansas City, which speaks to Paul mentioning before that Kansas City's not up to snuff offensively. But, I mean, they gave up 472 yards to Washington. 406 yards in the first matchup against Dallas, 505 yards to Buffalo, and last week's loss, a humiliating 42 to 19 defeat, Sean. They gave up another five, 456 yards to the 49ers. What's your take, buddy? I, I, and I've said this for a while about this team. They have been playing with fire for the last two months. I mean, go back. They have one win by more than eight points going back. I mean, where's this 25, 11 over Tampa, 23, 14 over Rams, everything else. They're a play away from losing every game. This is, and I thought Philly, I was like, wow, you know, they're going to be all right. You lose a couple guys. It'll take you a while to get back in system. They'll still be good, talented on offense, whatever you can't, it's going to catch up and bite you in the butt every once in a while. Doesn't it? And okay. They finally got caught. The lion got its tail. I, I think it's going to happen again. Dallas always puts up points on this team. Now, the problem with Dallas is that you've got crushed by the Niners. You lost to Philly. You were in a dogfight versus, versus the uh, Seahawks. So, listen, I, I'm on Dallas myself here, and I think they're going to win, and I don't. I think it should be a 10-point win. Dak, as much hit as he gets, puts up good numbers against this Philly uh, scheme. Paul mentioned the secondary tackles and all, if 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 your leading tacklers are all cornerbacks and safety, that means you got pen, whether it's the running backs getting downfield, you're not making any plays. I, I'm with them. This is this is Dallas by 10 to 14 points going away. We saw it in the second half. We saw it in the second quarter. Niners started slow, and next thing you know, it's 14-6 uh, or whatever it was 14, and it's and they're off to the races. Um, yeah. I expect more of the same here. Now, as a I'm biased Dallas fan, would I love to see a 
45 to 20 spanking? Yes. And I think it's probably going to be more like 34, 24 ish, probably 37, 30. Uh, something along those lines. I see a lot of points, but a Dallas win as well, covering a number. Don't worry about that hook. Don't. Again, yeah, that one I think uh, goes. Know. I think that goes up because of what you saw. I mean, that was a two and a half on the open. It was that three sitting there for a while. They get blasted. And it goes up half a point. You yeah. Know. Well, I went six and two in the NFL last week, and four of the wins were totals, and all all of them were overs. And we mentioned how many unders we've seen. Uh, we saw. Early on to start the season, they were hitting at a abnormal rate, um, and it always seems to level off when when time comes. Now, Paul will tell you, and he's right, is you, you can't go by stuff like that and just bet blindly. And I don't, but I do believe that uh, the odds makers will adjust the lines accordingly because of the numerous unders that have been occurring. And you may be able to find value on overs, but you still got to pick the right games. Uh, this one, I really have to take a look at. Again, this looks like a bona fide over to me. Um, I know the number is high. It's that high for good reason at 53. Uh, but we're talking about a team that's averaging 41 points per game at home. I had them over last Thursday night uh, against the uh, Seahawks. And, and that game easily went over the total, 41 to 35 final score. Um, and when you got a team that's averaging 41 at home, and you got another team in Philadelphia, like I just touched upon, uh, Paul, that they're, uh, you know, four of the last five games, they've given up more than 400 yards. Uh, so I have a little slight lean toward the total there. But uh, anyway, Paul, our official pick is your pick, which is the Dallas. Cowboys minus three, minus 115. Anything more you want to touch upon on that matchup or anything that either one of us just uh, alluded to? And then tell the folks a little bit about why they should be buying from Paul uh, Bovey over at gamblersworld.net. Uh, the only other thing I will say is I also grabbed the money line at minus $1.75, which is the best price you can get right now. And I will tell you, I did not bet this small. I don't make small bets. Usually uh, that every game I give out, uh, not necessarily these comp games, but every game that I post, I, I play. And oftentimes I label them five dimes, seven dimes, 10 dimes. And I, I, I actually step in pretty heavy on these games and it corresponds to the number I put up. Um, I have two games up there right now. My specialty is catching early movers. Uh, I caught one this week. I'm going to give it out because the number is gone. And I did that a few weeks ago with New Mexico over Utah State. The line opened at nine, nine and a half. It ultimately plummeted to four, and I gave it out at six and a half. And I also grabbed the Bears this week at four and a half on the open. It is now down to three. I think the Bears have a good shot to win. But there's also a bowl game up there right now. And these bowl games are what I've been concentrating on for the last 24 hours instead of all this rigmarole with who should be uh, uh, yeah. in, the, in the final four because uh, that's in the past. And now I want to concentrate on winning wagers. So I will be posting these bowl games periodically. These numbers are going to move with opt-outs and injuries, and they're going to move radically. So you want to be on the right side of the number. Now, the game I already posted, it's already moved. But I still think there's room there uh, to capture this uh, total. It's, it's an over, and I, I think – Think if you go in and get my plays early, you're going to do very, very well. So I will have several NFL plays up there uh, besides the Bears that are up there right now. And I'll also, as I said, have several bowl games. I am, I believe, 15 and six or 15 and four in college over the last 30 days. We had, I think I was two and one this week. I split on New Mexico State. Uh, we disappointingly, they did not get the cover. Uh, and uh, I also won the Boise game over. So uh, it, just get in, get these wagers, get them early and make some money. 
Paul is uh, number two overall at the site in college football this year in terms of money earned. Only uh, second to uh, Mr. Higgs, who's number one. Uh, Paul's number two over the last 90 days in college football. Number one over the last 60 days in college football. Number one over the last 30 days in college football. So there you have it, folks. And I know many of you, and and I appreciate the kind comments, uh, say that I come across as a uh, an honest gentleman. And I appreciate that because that's all I have is my integrity and my honesty uh, in this business that's littered with uh, some that aren't quite up to those standards. And uh, nobody on this show uh, falls into that category. But um, I could tell you firsthand that I would not allow somebody to come on this show and say they're making five, seven thousand or ten thousand dollar bets unless I knew it to be absolutely true. And he's not lying to you. OK, folks, uh, Paul's a real wise guy when it comes to sports betting. He makes his living out of sports betting uh, and he likes to spread the wealth. And uh, why not spread the wealth with you? But you know what? Like I said, on numerous occasions, um, we don't work for free. And uh, anybody out there who thinks we should be giving every, everything away for free and putting the time and research and effort into the show. Uh, when was the last time your boss asked you to work for free? Uh, I rest my case. In any event, Sean, tell the folks a little bit about what you got coming up. Well, I said I was going to take it slow in bowl season. I just loaded up nine games. I think I have 19 games up now, like a sick wacko. Now, I'm not betting huge five, seven, nine dimers, ten dimers like Paul. I throw a lot out of action, and Ross always tells you, money management, lower amounts, you know, bankroll, you know, grind it out. Um, but, yeah, college, I got college football up, NFL. What's there to say? Uh, I've been struggling in college basketball. I said this on the on the morning video, and now that I've worn the shirt twice today, it's got to go into the it's got to go into the wash now. Thanks, Ross. I can do laundry. Come in and wash the show. I got the laundry. Got a laundry day. Yeah, I, and you know, you're you're a volume handicapper, okay? So when it's no sign of weakness that you're betting lower amounts. Because you're a volume handicapper. Yeah, you know, and, uh, listen, you mentioned the, the shady cats, and you just have a whole entourage of folks who wanted to, like, oh, you're not betting this amount. Well, all right. Well, we just, we bet different. I'm not in competition with, you know, you or you yeah, or you. No, it's, I'm, doing, you I'm doing it my way. I've been doing It's been working on me for 20 some years. I, I'm all right. I, you know, yeah. And I'm even that guy, I got food Paul, to eat. I'm doing all right. I think the Paul will say that. It's all relevant, man. It, it, it is. really is. Um, yeah. You know, and, you got to stay within your comfort zone. If you're not, if you if you're uncomfortable uh, beyond a certain point, don't venture into that area because you will change your 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 wagering uh, if you start betting with scared money. So stay within your comfort zone. But I always believe you want to bet with confidence. If you yes. really believe in something and you're passionate about it and you feel you're getting the best of the number, because if you get the best of the number. You're going to have options before game time. And that's, that's the that's B is the key. key. Yes. And that's why sometimes I'm not betting necessarily a team that I'm uh, so enamored with. I'm betting a number that I'm so enamored with, knowing I will have choices down the road. Yep. It, it's all about beating a number. And people don't realize that when they chime in with their comments sometimes. And we encourage all your comments, folks. But sometimes I think some of you out there lose sight of the fact that we're sports betters and we're, we're giving fans. out we're not fans, fans. Teams. we're not we, we don't have an allegiance it's going against your team is not nothing personal okay and sometimes uh we use an underdog and people tell us we're crazy well remember an underdog could lose the game and still cover you know so again good points and paul i think you would agree money even at the amount of money that you're betting per game the money management comes into play and it's a dictated on your gambling bankroll, correct? I I use a very unconventional strategy. I don't espouse that this is the best. I don't necessarily recommend it because there are pros that will tell you, well, wager a certain percentage. I tend to stick my neck out when I feel I have the advantage on something. And I don't, I, my bankroll is a mythical one. I don't have a set number. Uh, I, I just play. I, I 
play what I feel I'm comfortable with, uh, given what I have and how overwhelmed I am with what I feel is going to be an accurate selection. So that's how I approach it. It's different than most people, and I stand behind it. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's what I'm comfortable with and yeah. what has worked for me. But it's a consistent strategy. Is it consistent? Yeah. I stick my neck out. I, I may amble along and play X, 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 and then maybe I see something I like and I'll go 5X or 10X. Yeah, I got you. So, again, the, the key word in that is strategy, folks, a betting the strategy. Key, the key word is Paul's been doing this long, so you have the bankroll to do that. The other – and new person doesn't have our bankroll that's it. unless unless they have some job making a quarter million you don't have a bankroll to to come in and play huge sums of money and, and 40 games and a college basketball Saturday that's number one so it's different for everyone and we can so you you play to- more I guarantee you, you play more I don't even do college basketball because yeah. I don't have the time I really want to be focused in on two sports. So that's why I'm not a volume handicapper. I just can't spread myself that thin, and I have other things going on as well. So, uh, and it's all relative, you know. If I'm my X that I'm betting five X, ten X, you know, the X for somebody else is just a lower number, but they may come in five, ten X on on a much lower number. It's all relative. Well, when I yeah. when, when I do my volume, it's I really don't go crazy on one game more than the other because there's so many, I just can't. Because then it's like, there's so many because I don't want to pick and choose, Paul. You know, it's like, all right, I like these numbers are all kind of fit my narrative. So I have to have, whether it's seven games, could be 17, could be two. But they're all going to be kind of the same. I'm not going to say, well, it's Monday, there's only one game I'm going to bet what I normally bet rolling on a Saturday when there's 17 games of college basketball. No, no, no. I don't, that's, I'm not, the bankroll's not the same on Saturday as for Monday if there's four games, I like one. You know, that's, you can't do that. But people do. I don't, I don't get it. I'm, Everybody's saying, right. I don't understand. I don't understand the world. You know? yeah. Sorry, Ross. We, yeah. can, we can just talk off after That's this. Okay. We can go on forever. Me and okay, talk man. It's a good conversation. <laughs> and uh, it's it's interesting to hear it from two different perspectives of both both people being successful on how they do it. So, uh, again, there's no right or wrong on both sides. And uh, I, I'm more in line with what Sean does. Um, and, again, uh, you know, Paul's a, a big volume better, and not a volume better, a, a high money price better. And uh, again, the, the old cliche is don't try to sit home. So if you can't afford to bet what Paul's betting, please don't do so just because you bought his pick. You know, so look, I, I, I want to make one more point. You know, sometimes this doesn't work out in your favor. My, yeah. my biggest play on Sunday, I, I, I hit most of them. But unfortunately, the biggest play was the Titans. I hit all my props on the game, my team totals on the game. But unfortunately, uh, I think two block punts and a Nick Folk extra point uh, miss uh, did me in. Uh, So that was my biggest play. And it offset what would have been a great day because it was my major wager. So, you know, sometimes that strategy, that 510x strategy, it doesn't work out. But I... I roll yeah. with it, and in the long run, it generally works for me. I went well, six and two. If everything last hit week. for your in-game sides on it, or not in-game, but all your prop side of it, you were there. It should have got there if everything else is going right for you in the, in the game, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, yeah. I I had Indy in uh, that game, and I feel completely. Ble- it was like I did this, and let me move on to the next game because, uh, in my estimation, I did not deserve to win that game. And Paul just alluded to some of the circumstances uh, which were instrumental in that result occurring. Um, Six and two last week. That game, I was fortunate. My two losses came by a combined point and a half. So, I mean, uh, it is what it is. There's a fine line between six and two and eight and oh. Uh, In any event, folks, I'm going to talk about the Packers and the Giants. It's the uh, one of the two Monday night games. That's why I'm covering it, and I certainly didn't want to stick these two guys uh, with this matchup, even though Paul would have a a real good opinion when it comes to the Giants game because he's been a Giants season ticket holder for many, many years, but he stays objective when it comes to the world of sports betting. Um, The Packers are a a six-and-a-half-point favorite to totals 37. You know, Paul, 
Um, I look for every reason I can to use the Giants in this game because I said, you know, everybody and their mother is going to bet Green Bay here. I mean, and why not? I mean, yeah, the Giants have won their last two. Well, let's keep things in perspective. Those two wins came over New England and Washington. As a matter of fact, the Giants are 4-8 and eight right now. They beat Washington twice. They beat New England, and they beat Arizona. And uh, those three teams that account for their four wins have a combined record of 9-29, and 29, which is a 237 win percentage. The Giants at home have been off offensively anemic. Now, I know Tommy DeVito is a sweetheart right now in the metropolitan New York area. <laughs> Number one, he's an all—he's a paisan like me. Uh, but I watched Tommy DeVito at Syracuse. I watched him at Illinois. Never impressed and never lived up to the hype of being a four-four-star uh, recruit out of high school in New Jersey. That's my opinion. Um, now, has he performed better than I thought he would at the NFL level? Yes, but still. Uh, yeah, he's not leading an offense that's been prolific of late. Even in their two wins, uh, last two wins, they've been anemic offensively. Uh, they're doing just enough to win, and they're putting, doing it against bad teams. And the Giants at home this year in, in five home games are averaging seven points per game. Seven points per game. They've scored 14 points or fewer in all five home games this year. Green Bay has really come out of late. Three and zero straight up in ATS in her last three. Uh, four and one straight up in ATS in her last five. Uh, their last two wins have come over Kansas City, who's eight and four, and Detroit, who's nine and three. And they did that on the road. Jordan Love uh, might be the most improved starting quarterback in the NFL from the beginning of the season till now. Um, that's my opinion. Again, uh, uh, there could be an it could be argued. It might be somebody else. But you look at the fact that he looked just absolutely terrible and a complete bust for a number one draft choice at one point. And now this guy has put up 250 yards or more passing in each of the last four games. And the Packers, by the way, over their last five games are averaging 389 yards per game offensively. The Giants have had a real difficult time stopping the run. They've given up 164 yards a game. Uh, over their last three on the ground. And Green Bay has rushed for over 100 yards or more in each of their last five. And that when you can rush the ball good, then it sets up your play-action passing game, and Jordan Love's been hot. Reluctantly, very reluctantly, and probably not a side that I'm going to use this week, but because I assigned myself this beauty of a matchup, uh, I can't find a way to use the Giants, Sean. So I'm going to use... Green Bay with a very slight lean, minus six and a half, because uh, you know what? They're the better team unequivocally right now. Sean, your take. I, I mean, this was a four and a half. I could I could see taking Green Bay. Because I, I was a fan of Green Bay to start the year. I thought Love, he's in the system. He's been there, and they were going to be an improved team. I, you know, I think one of the preview shows, I said take Green Bay to win in North. I I do. I, I still think they win. Uh, again, I don't. I'm not comfortable laying six and a half on a road, especially because everybody just saw them beat Kansas City. I know the under has come down. What's the under now? It was 37. I don't know what it's at right now. It's, it's, oh, it's still 37. 37. How about an under here? Yeah. The, the defense. You know, you, yardage is one thing, but you see who they're playing against. You're playing against Mahomes, elite quarterback. Detroit. It's an offense that scores points. Even the Chargers, as bad as they are, you still got a decent quarterback, some talent there. You look at the bad teams they play, and they get nothing out of bad quarterbacks when they face them. Like look at you see the score is 10, 17, 13. Bad teams, the defense comes to shine. And all right, Tommy D might be having a nice 60 some percent completion percentage and throwing little dink and dunks, but really, is this game, especially a short week, big win, is this game really gonna get to 35 points here? Well, are the Giants scoring three touches? Is this are the Giants scoring 17? I don't think so. They, no, haven't so I'll, I'll 14, they haven't scored more than 14 at home all year. Yeah. So I, I, I anyway. would under here. Let's go under. Okay. Under 37. I mean, uh, you, you know, you make a compelling case. Uh Paul, um, again, buddy, help me out here because uh, uh I know that you're gonna be objective in your opinion here. 
And uh, but even though you're a season ticket holder, you also encourage your brother to sell the tickets all year. So anyway, go ahead, Paul. First of all, I encourage him to sell the seat license, but he won't. Oh, seat uh, license. Okay. Yeah. Which because, is about uh, what, I, 20 grand? I don't know. I No, no, no. I went for the cheaper license upstairs, first row of the upper deck. But I, I went to the stadium once. I'll never go back. It's not the it's easiest terrible. place to get there. It's, it's awful. Yeah. It, Dude, it's they built this, awful. They, they had a parking lot, and they built this giant mall. It was called Xanadu. I call it Xanadu. It was called Xanadu. I, remember, I mean, it was called Xanadu when they built it. It was like indoor. Like, we need another mall in New Jersey. In the parking lot, when there used to be a basketball arena, it's Xanadu. Damn. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's totally ruined it. Totally ruined the Meadowlands. It's it's first of all the stadium's in a lousy place to begin with. That the configuration is is terrible. So anyway, yeah, sell the tickets, sell the seat license, do whatever you want. Now let's get to the game. I would like to be relive my twenties and be Tommy DeVito right now because it would it's like shooting fish in a barrel if you know what I mean. He's really bad. <laughs> Uh, he's, I mean, I had, to, I had to work for it, you know. I mean, this guy, <laughs> this guy yeah. is ba basking in his 15 minutes of fame. He's going to sandwich shops for appearances, but God bless him. He, you know, right place, right time. Tommy DeVito. I'll tell you, Sean. Unfortunately, I'm going the other side on this game. Uh, Ross, you made a good point. The Packers are running the ball. That looked like a completely different offense the other night when we watched them against Kansas City. I mean, this is not the same offense we saw early in the season. He's getting the ball out to the receivers. A.J. Dillon is running it. Uh, and they've uh, just, you know, look, they've had some injuries, but they've managed to work around them. But their run defense is not good. Uh, Kansas City ran through them the other night with the greatest of ease. Pittsburgh ran for over 200 yards. They have struggled the entire year stopping the run, and you can go back to that Atlanta game in game two when the Falcons yeah. gashed them. So I do think the Giants will have enough success. They won't have to score a lot to push this game over the number because I could see Green Bay getting into the high 20s. So if Green Bay gets you 27, how much do you really need from the Giants here? I, I just think Green Bay is good for 24 points at the very minimum here, and the game should go over the total. I got it at 36 and a half, and I did play it. Yep, so uh, there you have it in the uh, home where uh, Jimmy Hoffa resides, some would say. <laughs> um, I, I, my official pick is the Packers minus six and a half. These gentlemen on the opposite sides of the total for their leans, but uh, we'll count. We'll uh, concentrate on our official picks here, which are going to be the Buffalo Bills plus two and a half at Kansas City from Sean Higgs. It's going to be the Dallas Cowboys minus three at money line odds to minus one fifteen. And Paul says if you need, if you have to take three and a half, it won't matter anyway. Take the Dallas Cowboys over the Philadelphia Eagles. And again, I'm taking the Green Bay Packers minus six and a half over the Giants. Don't forget, folks, if you haven't subscribed, uh, take a second to do so and then go into your YouTube settings and uh, click on that alert notification bell for the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. And uh, you'll be notified immediately upon one of our six uh, podcasts weekly going up on our great channel. And why not make your life easier instead of checking back all the time and just uh, subscribe and then hit that alert notification bell. By the way, the subscription, absolutely free. There's a like button right underneath. Click on that like button. Um, it's just a small token of your appreciation, folks, for the work, time, and effort we put into giving you a quality podcast on a daily basis and also making you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. For Sean Higgs, Paul Bovey, and myself, Ross Benjamin, take care and God bless, folks.